You, you didn't believe she was dead? Quite a severe head injury, but she was very much still alive on the back seat. Princess Diana, often called the People's Princess, won the hearts of many with her modesty, kindness, and compassion. But behind the dazzling gowns and global fame lay a life of significant struggle and sadness that left her feeling deeply lonely and sad because her husband and the royal family did not give her the love she needed. While it's heartbreaking that Diana's sons have admitted the same about their father, of course they don't blame Charles entirely because they know a shocking truth about the origins of their parents' marriage. Furthermore, not only was Charles the one who unilaterally stirred up the mist in this marriage, but Diana also sought revenge, leading to an unnecessary breakup. Did Prince Charles really love her? What secrets did her son reveal that people have suspected for years? The intricacies of the British royal family have long captivated public interest, yet recent revelations have emerged that may fundamentally alter perceptions of this storied institution. At the heart of these unfolding narratives is Princess Diana, a figure who transcended her royal title to become a symbol of hope and compassion amid a landscape often characterized by privilege and power. However, beneath her renowned demeanor lay a life marked by turmoil, betrayal, and profound sadness. Diana's marriage to Prince Charles deviated significantly from the fairy tale narrative that many anticipated, and the subsequent events have indelibly shaped historical discourse. In a surprising development, her son, Prince William, has chosen to come forward with disclosures that could potentially challenge the very foundations of the British monarchy. This raises critical questions. What motivations compel a future king to unveil such secrets? What unsettling truths exist behind the opulent facade of Buckingham Palace? Most importantly, how are these revelations intertwined with the tragic life and premature death of his esteemed mother? These inquiries have lingered in the consciousness of those who have observed the royal family over the decades. While glimpses of internal strife within the House of Windsor have been visible, the recent disclosures present a more troubling narrative, one steeped in deception, power struggles, and loss. We invite you to join us on this exploration as we seek to uncover the concealed realities of one of the world's most renowned and controversial families. Is residing within the royal family a straightforward endeavor? Princess Diana entered the House of Windsor with aspirations typical of many young women who marry into royalty. However, the reality of her new existence proved to be a stark contrast to the idealized fairy tale she may have envisioned. From the outset, Diana encountered significant discord with the royal family, facing challenges that would ultimately transform her life into a public exhibition of distress and heartache. Upon her engagement to Prince Charles, the world observed with fascination as she ascended into the limelight. Young, beautiful, and seemingly living a charmed life, Diana's experience behind closed doors was, however, far from idyllic. The fissures in her marriage to Charles became apparent almost immediately, with the pressures inherent in royal life exacerbating an already strained relationship. From the beginning, Diana was ill-prepared for the stringent protocols and the often aloof demeanor of the royal family. Her interactions with Queen Elizabeth II, while characterized by respect, remained formal and distant. This left Diana feeling increasingly isolated and unsupported, particularly during times when she required guidance the most. This sense of alienation intensified as she grappled with the relentless scrutiny that accompanied her role as Princess of Wales. One of the initial significant blows to Diana's self-esteem occurred when she learned that Prince Charles had not fully severed ties with Camilla Parker Bowles. It is noteworthy that Camilla, now Queen Camilla, serves as the official consort to King Charles III, and the enduring nature of her relationship with Charles cast a long shadow over Diana's marriage. As Diana endeavored to acclimate to her new responsibilities, she swiftly recognized that she was contending with forces far beyond her individual capacity. The royal family, constrained by long-standing traditions and shrouded in secrecy, 
was not an environment where a young, independent woman such as Diana could easily flourish. The burdensome secrets of the House of Windsor began to weigh heavily on her, leading her to feel increasingly confined within a life that was becoming more suffocating. Despite these adversities, Diana persevered in her royal duties, emerging as a beloved figure not only in Britain, but globally. She garnered the moniker, the People's Princess, due to her genuine compassion and commitment to charitable endeavors. However, this popularity only served to further alienate her from the royal family, who regarded her burgeoning influence with suspicion and envy. The more Diana sought to establish her own identity, the more she found herself at odds with the traditional expectations imposed upon her. Her aspiration to infuse warmth and humanity into the often cold and distant image of the monarchy was perceived as a threat by certain members of the royal household. This tension reached a critical juncture when Diana began to candidly discuss her struggles, both within her marriage and in relation to the royal family. Her openness in sharing her personal challenges was unprecedented and profoundly unsettling for the establishment. The most significant turning point occurred when Diana uncovered the deeper, more troubling secrets of the royal family. Secrets that would not only devastate her, but also challenge the very foundations of the British monarchy. These revelations, many of which implicated Prince Charles and his closest advisors, depicted a family deeply fractured and driven by power struggles that had remained concealed from public view for decades. As Diana's marriage to Charles continued to deteriorate, so too did her mental well-being. She increasingly felt paranoid, sensing that she was being observed and manipulated by those within the palace. This feeling of betrayal was exacerbated by relentless media scrutiny that transformed her personal life into a public spectacle. The press, perpetually eager for scandal, seized upon every facet of Diana's existence, often distorting the truth to fit their narratives. In spite of these challenges, Diana remained resolute in her determination to protect her children, Prince William and Prince Harry, from experiencing the same fate she had endured. She sought to shield them from the toxic dynamics of the royal family and to ensure that they would not become entangled in the cycle of secrecy and betrayal that had engulfed her. It was this maternal instinct that ultimately compelled her to confide in those closest to her sharing the secrets she had uncovered in a desperate endeavor to regain some semblance of control over her life. The complexities surrounding the British royal family, particularly the insights shared by Prince William regarding King Charles, extend beyond mere personal grievances. These disclosures unveil a series of concealed realities that could potentially destabilize the very foundation of the monarchy. They reveal aspects of the royal family that have remained obscured from public scrutiny, elements characterized by betrayal, manipulation, and an unwavering quest for power. For an extended period, speculation has surrounded the true nature of King Charles's relationship with Princess Diana. While the public narrative depicted a strained marriage, the underlying realities appear to be far more troubling. According to the information disclosed by Prince William, the issues at play were not solely rooted in infidelity or emotional neglect. Rather, the more profound and concerning truth is that King Charles was never entirely devoted to his marriage with Diana. His affections were consistently directed toward another individual, Camilla Parker Bowles. This enduring affair transcended personal betrayal, it was a strategic maneuver intricately woven into the political landscape of the royal family. The revelations suggest a disconcerting reality. King Charles's marriage to Diana was part of a larger strategy to uphold the facade of a traditional and stable monarchy. Acknowledging the inevitable challenges of his relationship with Diana from the outset, Charles proceeded with the marriage, motivated by the expectations associated with his role as the heir to the throne. This choice was not merely a matter of personal inclination. It was a calculated decision aimed at securing his position within the royal hierarchy, even at the expense of Diana's happiness and well-being. The ramifications of these insights are significant. 
They imply that the royal family functions not only as a symbol of national unity, but also as a meticulously managed institution where personal aspirations are frequently subordinated to the interests of the crown. This perspective aligns with long-standing suspicions regarding the British monarchy, that its primary focus lies in preserving its image and authority, rather than prioritizing the welfare of its members. Moreover, the revelations extend further. Prince William's disclosures also suggest that the tragic circumstances surrounding Diana's untimely death may not have been as straightforward as the official accounts indicate. There are implications that the events leading to her passing were far more intricate and potentially orchestrated to suppress her voice. If substantiated, these assertions present a disquieting portrayal of a family prepared to take extreme measures to safeguard its secrets. The connection between these revelations and biblical prophecy is notably significant. The Bible contains numerous admonitions regarding the perils of deception and the pursuit of power at the expense of moral integrity. The narrative of King David and Bathsheba serves as a compelling illustration of how even the most powerful individuals can be led astray by their desires, resulting in severe consequences. Similarly, the experiences of King Charles and Princess Diana resonate with these ancient warnings, implying that the royal family's quest for power may have directed them onto a perilous and ethically questionable trajectory. These revelations also challenge the very concept of divine right, a principle historically associated with the British monarchy. If the monarchy is indeed founded on deceit and betrayal, as these disclosures suggest, what implications does that hold for its legitimacy? The moral decline within the royal family, as revealed by Prince William, raises profound questions about the future of the British monarchy and its relevance in contemporary society. The spiritual ramifications of these revelations are equally concerning. The royal family has traditionally represented stability and continuity, a living link to the past and a beacon of hope for the future. However, if these claims are accurate, the monarchy is not merely flawed, it is fundamentally corrupt. This corruption, concealed behind a veneer of tradition and ceremony, poses a threat to the moral and spiritual foundation of the nation. It is evident that the British monarchy is confronting an unprecedented crisis. The secrets disclosed by Prince William transcend familial matters. They represent a public scandal that challenges the very legitimacy of the crown. The pressing question now is whether the monarchy can endure these revelations or whether it will falter under the weight of its own deceit. Ultimately, these revelations serve as a stark reminder that no institution, regardless of its power or reverence, is immune to the repercussions of moral failure. The royal family, like any other institution, comprises human beings who are susceptible to the same temptations and weaknesses that have afflicted humanity throughout history. When those in positions of power opt to conceal the truth for self-preservation, they lay the groundwork for their eventual decline. This sobering reality closely aligns with scriptural warnings about the dangers of deception and the inevitable emergence of falsehoods in the end times, during which there will be a proliferation of false prophets, false teachers, and false Christs. Jesus cautioned that many would turn away from faith during the end times, stating, For many will come in my name, claiming, I am the Messiah and will deceive many. Many false prophets will appear and deceive many people. Matthew 24, 5, 11 NIV. In the Gospel of Luke, we encounter a significant warning from Jesus. Watch out that you are not misled, for many will come in my name, saying, I am he, and the time is near. Do not follow them. Luke 21, 8 net. From this and other statements made by Jesus, we can derive several assumptions regarding the Christian faith in the context of the last days. Assumption 1. The Continuation of Christianity The first assumption, often overlooked, is the expectation that Christianity will persist until the end of time. For the predictions of Jesus to be realized, 
it is imperative that Christianity remains in existence at that time. Historically, numerous religions have emerged and gained followers only to eventually fade away. In contrast, Christianity continues to thrive. Assumption 2. Global Proclamation of Christ's Message Furthermore, it is assumed that the message of Jesus Christ will be disseminated worldwide. The Gospel of Matthew concludes with Jesus instructing his disciples. Jesus came and told his disciples, I have been given all authority in heaven and on earth. Therefore, go and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Teach these new disciples to obey all the commands I have given you, and be sure of this. I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Matthew 28.18-20 New Living Translation At the time of this declaration, it seemed unlikely that such a mandate could be fulfilled. Nevertheless, Christianity has emerged as the most populous religion globally. Assumption 3. Proclamation of His Return In addition to the continuity of faith, it is remarkable that the predictions indicate not only the presence of believers at the end of days, but also their active proclamation of Christ's return. The assertion that followers would continue to believe in Jesus until the very end is extraordinary, particularly considering the context in which these predictions were made. More astonishing is the claim that they would specifically communicate the message of his return to the world. The fulfillment of this scriptural claim is evident, as many not only acknowledge Jesus as the Messiah, but also proclaim his imminent return. The probability of such a claim proving true, two millennia after it was made by an individual who would soon face death for the very message he proclaimed, is indeed remarkable. Assumption 4. False Claims Regarding His Return Jesus further cautioned that amidst the genuine proclamation of his return, there would be individuals misleading the faithful with false claims. This warning was articulated by Jesus during the final week of his life. Specifically, while some would speak of his second coming, others would propagate erroneous assertions concerning the timing of this event. Historically, since the Lord's ascension into heaven, Numerous individuals have claimed to ascertain the exact timing of his return, yet all such predictions have proven to be inaccurate. This pattern of false predictions is unlikely to cease in the future. The crux of the issue lies in the fact that Jesus explicitly stated that the timing of his return is unknown, but as for that day and hour, no one knows it, not even the angels in heaven, except the Father alone. Matthew 24, 36, net. If Jesus declares that no one knows, then it stands to reason that no one knows. Assumption 5. The Emergence of False Messiahs Jesus admonished that false Christs would emerge throughout history. Indeed, there have been at least 40 individuals within the historical context of Israel who have claimed to be the long-awaited Messiah. David Barron notes, more than 40 false messiahs have appeared in the history of the Jewish nation, all of whom garnered substantial followings. Some were even endorsed as the true messiah by prominent rabbis, their only credentials being promises of retribution and flattery that appealed to national pride. However, in contemporary times, aside from a select group of historians, the memories of these figures have largely faded from public consciousness. In stark contrast, Jesus of Nazareth, who faced scorn from his own people and was crucified, is revered by hundreds of millions, many of whom consider it a profound honor to endure persecution for his name. The religion he established is recognized as the only one applicable to all societal strata and is destined, among other things, to permeate the earth as water covers the sea. As we approach the end times, the appearance of false Christs will persist. Assumption 6. The Following of Self-Proclaimed Messiahs Jesus specifically instructed believers not to pursue these false messiahs, indicating that there will indeed be individuals who choose to follow them. This serves as a cautionary note. Over the past two millennia, numerous false messiahs have arisen, 
and regrettably, this trend will continue, drawing many adherents. A common thread among all these figures is their propensity to mislead individuals away from the truth of the true and living God. Assumption 7. The Arrival of a Universal False Christ Ultimately, as previously discussed, there is an impending false messiah who will be embraced by the entire world. This individual will serve as the final Gentile ruler. Rather than embodying the true Christ, this figure will represent the Antichrist. His arrival will usher in the darkest period in the history of our planet. We have already addressed this topic in signs 14 and 15. Remarkably, each of the predictions or assumptions made by the New Testament regarding Jesus has been fulfilled literally, with the exception of the prophecy concerning the forthcoming man of sin, the final Antichrist. Consistent with the previous six assumptions, this individual will undoubtedly manifest in the future and deceive those inhabiting the earth. In regard to the end times, Jesus issued stern warnings concerning the false prophets, false teachers, and false Christs that would emerge. From these admonitions, along with the concluding messages imparted by the Lord, we can draw several observations. Christianity will persist until the end. It is essential to recognize that when this prediction was articulated, numerous religions within the Roman Empire were competing for followers. Thus, it was not assured that Christianity would endure for even a single generation, let alone for 2,000 years. However, as we now understand, Christianity has indeed survived. Not only will Christians be present at the end of time, but the message of Christianity will also reach the entire world. This assertion is particularly remarkable given the historical context in which it was made. Today, it is evident that this prediction has been realized, as Christianity remains the largest religion globally. Moreover, according to Jesus, it is anticipated that individuals will continue to proclaim his return in the last days. This prediction, which may have seemed implausible at the time, has indeed come to fruition. Additionally, we are warned that false prophets will emerge, leading people astray. The history of the church is replete with instances of individuals who have misled Christians by asserting knowledge of the precise timing of the Lord's return. Furthermore, there will be those who claim to be the Christ. As documented by author David Barron, over 40 individuals throughout Jewish history have claimed to be the long-awaited Messiah. We are also informed that a false Christ is forthcoming, who will be embraced by the entire world. His arrival will usher in the most severe period of turmoil ever experienced, the Great Tribulation. Given these forewarnings, we should not be taken by surprise. Jesus, as God the Son, has accurately predicted these events. The messages propagated by false prophets and false messiahs will often include animosity towards God's chosen people, the Jews. Our subsequent examination will address this phenomenon. Individuals generally categorize themselves into three groups regarding their perspectives on Israel. When inquiring about contemporary opinions on Jews and the state of Israel, people tend to align with specific viewpoints. Jewish Christian writer Steve Maltz categorizes these perspectives as follows. Those who believe that the Jews and the state of Israel possess a divine mandate, those who believe they do not have any divine mandate, and those who are uncertain about the matter. Given the persuasive arguments presented by the other two groups, it is imperative for Christians to form their own opinions and to seek God's truth on this subject. Understanding God's truth concerning the nation of Israel is essential, and the Bible serves as the sole source for this knowledge. It provides insight into how the world will perceive Jews in the last days and how Bible believers ought to regard them. Israel is destined to play a pivotal role in global events, as documented in this work. God is not finished with the nation of Israel or the Jewish people. Indeed, as previously noted, it has been foretold that Israel will miraculously endure until the end times. Furthermore, as highlighted in Sign 6, Israel will occupy a prominent position in the global spotlight during the last days. However, 
despite their central role in God's plan, they will be viewed with contempt by the world. The scriptures indicate that the entire world will stand against Israel in the end times. Zechariah records the Lord's declaration regarding Israel's situation immediately prior to the return of the Lord Jesus. I am going to make Jerusalem a cup that sends all the surrounding peoples reeling. Judah will be besieged as well as Jerusalem. On that day when all the nations of the earth are gathered against her, I will make Jerusalem an immovable rock for all the nations. All who try to move it will injure themselves. Zechariah 12, 3, 4, NIV. Specifically, the Bible refers to the nations in the region, as well as all nations on earth, aligning with the circumstances described in the days of Jeremiah. He recorded the Lord's assurance, but I will bring you health and will heal you of your wounds. This is the Lord's declaration, for they call you outcast, Zion, whom no one cares about. Jeremiah 31.17 CSB Indeed, they will be regarded as outcasts, facing significant animosity from a considerable majority of the global populace. Regrettably, this sentiment extends to many within organized religion. We observe the resurgence of anti-Semitism manifesting in various forms today. From the teachings of Jesus, we can draw several important conclusions. Christians will be present at the end of times, and there will be believers in Jesus Christ during the last days. It is noteworthy that, from a human perspective, the existence of his followers was far from certain at the time the Lord made this declaration. Nevertheless, his church, comprising true believers, will endure as the Lord foretold. On this rock, I will build my church, and the gates of Hades will not overcome it. Matthew 16:18, NY fee. This promise is unwavering. Nothing can impede its fulfillment. Furthermore, believers in Jesus Christ will face persecution due to their faith. Jesus indicated this reality. But before all this, they will seize you and persecute you. They will hand you over to synagogues and put you in prison, and you will be brought before kings and governors all on account of my name. Luke 21, 12-13, New International Version. The Apostle Paul reiterated this truth, stating, In fact, everyone who wants to live a godly life in Christ Jesus will be persecuted. 2 Timothy 3.12 NIV This has indeed been the historical experience of Christians over the centuries. For the past two millennia, Christians have professed the belief that Jesus Christ will return to earth, a hope that remains central to their faith. On the night of his betrayal, Jesus offered these reassuring words to his disciples. Do not let your hearts be distressed. You believe in God. Believe also in me. There are many dwelling places in my Father's house. Otherwise, I would have told you. Because I am going away to make ready a place for you. And if I go and make ready a place for you, I will come again and take you to be with me, so that where I am, you may be too. John 14, 1-3, Net. The Lord has assured us of His return, and it is important to recognize that He consistently fulfills His promises. The New Testament concludes with this hopeful affirmation, I, Jesus, have sent my angel to testify to you about these things for the churches. I am the root and the descendant of David, the bright morning star. And the Spirit and the bride say, Come, and let the one who hears say, Come. The one who testifies to these things says, Yes, I am coming soon. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. Revelation 22, 16-17, Net. Despite this, many continue to dismiss the notion of the Lord's return. There exists a significant number of individuals who reject this belief, often ridiculing the prophecy that a man who lived and died 2,000 years ago will return to earth as King of Kings and Lord of Lords. The apparent disinterest among Christians regarding the second coming of Christ prompted a conference in New York City organized by concerned Bible educators. The call for this conference began with the following statement, Dear brethren in Christ, when from any cause, some vital doctrine of God's word has fallen into neglect or suffered contradiction and reproach, 
it becomes the serious duty of those who hold it not only strongly and constantly to reaffirm it, but to seek by all means in their power to bring back the Lord's people to its apprehension and acceptance. The esteemed doctrine of Christ's second personal appearance has, regrettably, been subjected to considerable neglect and misunderstanding over time. The scriptures clearly highlight this doctrine as a significant tenet of faith, consistently emphasizing it as a personal and imminent event. It represents the principal object of the church's hope, serves as a powerful impetus for holy living and vigilant service, provides a source of inspiration amid the sorrows and challenges of the present world, and signifies the culmination of death's reign, the overthrow of Satan, and the establishment of God's kingdom on earth. The importance of this truth is underscored by the assertion that its denial is one of the notable signs of the last days. As we conclude our examination of the life, legacy, and complexities surrounding Princess Diana, it becomes imperative to shift our focus to the future of the British monarchy, a future now overshadowed by the revelations brought forth by her son, Prince William. The British monarchy, one of the most historic and esteemed institutions globally, currently finds itself at a pivotal crossroads. The disclosures that have emerged challenge the very foundations upon which this institution is built and compel us to reassess its role and relevance in the contemporary world. The revelations concerning King Charles and the royal family extend beyond mere personal shortcomings or familial disputes. They point to a more profound systemic issue within the monarchy, an institution that has, for centuries, prioritized the preservation of tradition and power above all else. This emphasis on maintaining the status quo has frequently come at the expense of the well-being of its members, as starkly illustrated by the life of Princess Diana. The pressing question now is whether the monarchy can adapt and endure in an era that increasingly demands transparency and accountability from its institutions. The British populace, and indeed the global community, has grown more cognizant of the complexities and flaws inherent within the royal family. The mystique that once surrounded the monarchy has diminished, giving way to a more critical and, at times, skeptical perspective regarding its relevance and role in today's society. Prince William's decision to disclose these secrets about his father represents a bold and unprecedented departure from the tradition of silence and discretion that has long characterized the royal family. In doing so, William not only pays homage to his mother's legacy, but also sets a new standard for the monarchy's future operations, advocating for greater openness, honesty, and a commitment to truth, regardless of its discomfort. However, this path is laden with challenges. The monarchy's capacity to navigate this tumultuous period hinges on its willingness to embrace change and address the issues that have surfaced. King Charles, now at the forefront of these revelations, faces a formidable challenge during his reign. He must confront not only the personal ramifications of these disclosures, but also lead the monarchy through a phase of intense public scrutiny and potential reform. For Prince William, the future is equally demanding. As the heir to the throne, he is expected to guide the monarchy through these turbulent times, balancing the imperatives of tradition with the necessity for modernization. As we reflect on the secrets that have emerged from within the British royal family, it is evident that we stand at a moment of significant transformation. The revelations concerning King Charles and the royal lineage, as articulated by Prince William, challenge both the historical sanctity of the monarchy and its future relevance in an era increasingly characterized by demands for transparency and accountability. The British monarchy, once a symbol of continuity and tradition, now confronts a critical juncture. The entrenched issues unveiled by these disclosures are not merely personal or familial, they signify a broader systemic struggle within an institution that has historically prioritized the preservation of power and tradition. Princess Diana's legacy, marked by personal anguish and public scrutiny, has now been overshadowed by her son's courageous decision to unveil uncomfortable truths. In doing so, Prince William has both honored his mother's memory 
and initiated a vital discourse regarding the monarchy's future. As we contemplate these developments, we are reminded of the broader lessons that extend beyond the royal family. The imperative for truth, accountability, and reform is universal, affecting all institutions and individuals in positions of power and influence. The journey ahead for the monarchy will necessitate a delicate balance between honoring its storied past and embracing the imperative for change. 